Maranatha, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a pleasure to be here with you today, and I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to hear a lesson on reasoning with Mormons. If you have your Bibles, I'd like us to turn to John chapter number 1, verse number 1. That's going to be John 1 and verse number 1. And I'll preface this by saying a few verses in John chapter number 1 you can apply to any cult that you deal with because the biggest issue with any cult is going to be what they think of Jesus Christ, the biblical Christ. So, John chapter number 1, verse number 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So, today we're going to be talking about reasoning with Mormons. Reasoning with Mormons. Um, and I think there's a couple things that we have to kind of uh, lay the foundation for. Uh, number one, there is a irreconcilable problem between Christianity and Mormonism. You say, Peter, what is that problem? We believe, as Bible-believing Christians, that Joseph Smith, the founder of Mormonism, preached another god. You say, well, Peter, that's very mean. I don't think Joseph Smith really taught that. Well, actually, Smith taught that man can become God, a God, and that there were gods that there were gods before God. Rather, um, Joseph Smith, uh, one of his quotes says, "Here then is eternal life, to know the only wise and true God, and you have got to learn how to be gods yourselves, and be and to be kings and priests unto God." The same as all gods have done before you. Well, Peter, that was just a random quote. Let me give you another one. This is a very famous quote in Mormonism. We have imagined and supposed that God was God from all eternity. I will refute that idea. And I will take away the veil so you may see. Do you see that? Joseph Smith says, we have imagined and supposed that God was God from all eternity. And all Bible-believing Christians said, Amen. But Joseph Smith comes along and says, I will refute that idea. Do you, do you start seeing the difference between Bible-believing Christianity and Mormonism? That's a big deal. Um, the, 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 the next person that followed him excuse me, was Brigham Young. Uh, Brigham Young, he's the second prophet and he was the president of the Mormon church, he actually delivered a message in Salt Lake Tabernacle, I think it was uh, August, August 8, 1952, and he, he affirmed what Joseph Smith taught. He said, the Lord created you and me for the purpose of becoming gods like himself. That's nuts. Okay, let me add to that, uh, Lorenzo Snow, um, this, is, this is another famous quote, a lot of the uh, Mormon missionaries that come to your door, they learn this quote while they're in seminary, now listen to it, as man is, God once was, as God is, man may become, meditate on that, think about that for a second, remember we're talking about Joseph Smith teaching that men can become gods, Listen to this, as man is, okay, God once was, so God was once a man. As God is, man may become. Listen, brethren, the Bible does not teach that men can become gods. It doesn't, plainly. Now, let me give you another quote here, okay? Bruce McConkie, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, said, Thus those who gain eternal life receive exaltation. They are gods. Now, if you ask a missionary if there's one God, they may say, well, he's our God. He's our only one. Now, they may also try to follow up with John 10.34. John 10.34 is a very famous verse. It says, is, is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? Now, on a side note to the astute, uh, learned Bible person, okay, Jesus doesn't say, ye can become gods. It was more of a rebuke on religious leaders, okay? So you take things out of context in the Bible, you apply it to presuppositions, 
you know, you can make it say whatever you want, but that's not what was being stated there, okay? So when we study Mormonism, one of the main things I want to point back to, and this is how we need to draw the conversation, we believe Joseph Smith preached another god. He preached another gospel. He preached something foreign to the Bible account of God's person, God's actions, uh, God's, you know, eternality. I mean, there, there are so many sub points of difference we could spend all day talking about how truly different it is but the main thing that i want to focus on when we work with mormons is that we have to get them to realize there is truly an irreconcilable problem between christianity and mormonism um let me give you another thing okay number two we have to declare that they preach another christ and another gospel now that doesn't sound fun but we have to declare it because I don't serve the God of Mormonism. And if you are a saved, Bible-believing person who's, you know, even just, from, you know, one time kind of skimmed over the New Testament, you realize you don't serve the God of Mormonism. So as a Christian, when we compare these statements to the Bible, Smith contradicts what Jesus Christ taught. Now, I'm going to give you guys some awesome, awesome ammo and it's it's been in your Bible from day one, all right. But uh, a lot of times we we don't know where to go to start conversations with people who don't believe in the same Christ we do. So I'm going to give you an awesome verse: Isaiah chapter number forty three, verse number ten and eleven. This is awesome. If you don't if you don't if you want to stop the 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 YouTube uh, video after this, perfect. I don't care. Catch this, okay? Ye are my witnesses, Isaiah forty three ten and eleven, saith the Lord. And my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he, who's talking God. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior." you're in the habit of marking things in your Bible, mark that. I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Does that contradict what uh, Joseph Smith taught? You better believe it. And that is our point, beloved. There's a difference. There's contradictions. There's inconsistencies that we have to point to. Okay, um, now when you work with Mormons, you start bringing this stuff up, I'll be honest with you, uh, the Mormon may stop the conversation and just push you to read the Book of Mormon. Now, listen, <clears throat> we, we, we have manners, okay, and we understand that this is a cult, and they're just, they're trying to do the best that they can, and sometimes we'll hit a block, we'll hit a road, uh, a road blocker, okay? Um, one thing that we have to do is just, you know, kindly say, listen, you know, if, if you've read it, great, okay? I, I prefer not to read it again. But at the end of the day, God has already said long before Joseph Smith came along what he is and who he is. And Joseph Smith, whatever Joseph Smith says, it flatly contradicts what God said about himself. Okay? Why would I want to read a false account a contradictory account of another book that is quote unquote another revelation when the first revelation that God gave is I mean it contradicts what that says now listen be kind you know but this is a this is a this is a stalling tactic okay this is I'm done with the conversation Read the Book of Mormon. We don't really want to answer any of these questions. But listen, we have to get to the point at hand. The point at hand, you know, Galatians 1, 8, and 9 says, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which uh, we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. What's crazy about the Book of Mormon is it says it's another testament of Jesus Christ. And Paul is saying, if any man preach any other gospel, if, if, if they come with another gospel, 
let him be accursed, right? As we said before, and so say again, if any man preach another gospel unto you than we have, than ye have received, let him be accursed. Second uh, Corinthians eleven four says, "For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, okay, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which." ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So the Mormon is teaching another Jesus, and he's teaching another gospel. Let me give you an example, okay? Um, Second Nephi says, For by grace are ye saved after all ye can do. Now, to any new Christians that are listening, Second Nephi is not in the King James, okay? It's not in the 66 books that Bible-believing Christians hold to. All right, It's the Book of Mormon. So 2 Nephi, on one hand, says, For by grace are you saved, after all that ye can do. Um, the, Mormon will, may, the Mormon may say, you know, we'll follow Christ, do everything he asks us to do, pray, read the scriptures, keep the commandments, get baptized for the dead, quote-unquote. Um, then we will be saved through his grace. You know, they can say, well, we have faith that... Maybe we'll go out and get a job, but you know we have to. We actually have to go out because God isn't gonna just just going to put a job in our laps. Now that's what they say on one side. Grace is saved after all ye can do. Now do parentheses deeds works labors. Okay, Romans three twenty eight. I love Romans chapter three. If you're looking for a good expository verse by verse chapter, Romans chapter three. Uh, listen to verse number 28. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the, what, deeds of the law, the doing, the actions, right? Galatians chapter number 5, verse number 4 says, Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Now remember who Galatians was written to. It was it was written to a, a body of people who, after Paul left, these Judaizers came into town and says that you are saved by grace and you're saved after keeping the law. Okay, And Paul says, listen, that's not right. Christ has become no, none effect to you if you're justified by the law. Because he also says in Romans chapter 3, verse 20 through 22, two, excuse me, therefore by the deeds of the law, the doings, the actions, right, of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. And I love this. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So think about what Paul, uh, what Paul is saying here. He says, therefore by the deeds, the keeping of the law, there's no flesh that's justified, that's declared innocent in the eyes of God. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Paul says the law was our schoolmaster. It was supposed to just bring us to Christ, to show us our inadequacies, our failures, our need of God. And it says even the righteousness of God, the righteousness that God gives to us, the imputed righteousness of God, the robes of righteousness, it doesn't come by works. He says, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. Listen, beloved. We need righteousness. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that's Christ, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Paul is saying, listen, it's not by the deeds of the law, because the very deeds that I bring to the table, my works are as filthy rags, my righteousness, everything that I bring to God, God doesn't want because it's stained with filthy, disgusting sin. And I can't come to God of my own righteousness, so Jesus Christ died so that he could represent me. He could take my place on the cross. He who knew no sin, the, the reason that 
we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Listen, when we come to Christ, apart from works, apart of good de- apart from good deeds, we solely put our faith, our eternity, our trust, our everything in Christ, and we say, listen, I believe, I look unto Jesus and I'm saved. God Himself imputes the very record, the very righteousness, the robes of righteousness, Isaiah says, of God on me. Why would I want to work? Why would I want to spend my whole life trying to go out and, you know, knock doors and try to get people to get baptized for the dead and try to get people, you know, to, to pass out books of Mormon when God has already satisfied, Jesus Christ has already satisfied the Father. He's already provided a way for salvation apart from the deeds of the law and He will make me righteous before God. Listen, it's a different gospel, beloved. And it's a... It's a it's an impossible gospel, honestly. It the, the word gospel means good news. Now listen, if I came to you and I said, um, somebody just bought you a Maserati, if you like Maseratis or insert whatever car you want, your dream car. Let's say, you know, some of you are Dodge people, maybe it's a Dodge Viper, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So they bought you your dream car and it's all paid for. All you have to do is ask for it. And it's there. You never have to pay insurance on it. It's got, you know, all the amenities. It's got every bell and whistle on it you want. It's all there. Okay? And what if I told you, well, all right, the other option is you can work your whole life. You can, um, you know, raise up debt. This car is $50 million. And uh, you'll never get it. Which option are you going to take? Are you going to take the option of the free car? Or are you just going to take the road where you kill yourself your entire life you just building up debt for a car you'll never have. Listen, it's it's a it's a bad analogy, I understand, but it's the idea behind it. When we talk to the Mormon, we're bringing good news. We're saying, "Listen, you are peddling, I'm sorry, a false gospel and you're peddling a false Christ. But the good news is that you can be saved and you don't have to worry about what you bring to the table. Your very deeds you can actually have the imputed righteousness of Christ, all because he lived a perfect life. He died on a cross. He was buried, and he was raised again the third day for our justification. God accepted what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And if you put your faith in Christ, you will be saved. Amen. So let's wrap up here. And I appreciate you guys taking your time. So let's just end this real quick, okay? So I want you to know that Mormons use the same word that we same words that we use, okay? You'll hear them use the words grace, but we understand it doesn't mean grace. Uh, it's atonement. Uh, it doesn't mean the same atonement that we believe. Um, now, what's really great, okay, is Philippians chapter number 3, verse number 9. Paul, one of... One of my heroes, okay? This is what he says. This is what he desires. And to be found in him, not having mine own righteousness. This is Philippians 3, nine, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. Which, I mean, what, what can that do, right? But this is, this is his desire. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, remember the imputed righteousness, which is of God by faith. It's by faith we get that. So here's how we end the conversation. Here's the differences. If God wasn't a man, like the Bible says, and there weren't any gods before him, like we looked at, then that means the Mormon missionary is out there preaching a false gospel and a false Christ. It's irreconcilable, brethren. But I want you to see the difference. I don't, I don't expect you to listen to this video and have a debate for four hours about Christology, theology, eschatology. I don't, I don't expect you to do that. 
what I do expect you to do is point to the glaringly obvious difference between Bible, Christianity, and the Mormon cult. It's a different God, and it's a different gospel. So if God wasn't a man, and there weren't any gods before him, then that means they're preaching a false gospel and a false Christ. I pray that the Lord will use you. I pray that the Lord will use this video. And if you want to go ahead and share it, I, I'm, I make no bones about it. I'm, not, I'm a very... Uh, untalented speaker okay i just did this because the lord has has blessed me with a lot of information um a lot of great guys are out there doing a lot of great things apologia church out there in uh, in uh, arizona they're doing some great things and uh, i want to give uh, brother jeff a lot of uh, credit for a lot of this and uh just want to just want to see what the Lord will do. So, Lord bless you. Once again, I appreciate you taking time to listen to this stammering tongue individual. May the Lord bless you. Thank you. God bless.